It was just midnight when I went out. I heard the village clock striking. And uh, why did you leave the flat, Miss Webster? Well, I, um... Yes? I, um, wanted to wash my hands. Was there not a bathroom in Mr. Hammond's flat? Oh, yes, but he is a gentleman. I didn't like to use it. Uh, oh, yes, of course. I see. So? I went back to my own little flat, uh, just for a minute. Who was in Mr. Hammond's flat when you returned? Nobody, my lord. Nobody at all? Well, Mr. Hammond was in the kitchen, but nobody else. Of course, Nicholas came in almost immediately, and then Standish, then Mr. Hammond from the kitchen with the supper, and Lady Isham, last of all. Miss Webster, you realise that perjury is a very grave offence? Oh, oh, sir, he didn't do it. Who didn't do it, madam? Uh, could I write it on a piece of paper? No, madam, you could not. Well, Nicky. Sir Nicholas Isham? Yes. Madam, what, what, what is this man to you? Oh, sir. Is he your lover? Oh, no, sir, no. Well, then, then why? Sir, he is my son. I beg your pardon. But it, it was a long time ago. Forty-eight years. On Midsummer Eve, Sir Martin and I. You went down to make a phone call at midnight on Christmas Eve? Yes, well, it, it was for Lady. Oh, I see. And where is the telephone exactly at Witching Hall? It's, it's on the ground floor. Little annex at the back of the hall. Ah, yes, I see. So could, if, could you have seen or heard anyone coming down those stairs and entering that library as you made your call? Fair not, don't you? It's a disgusting lie. The whole lot of it. All lies. Look, all of these people now admit having left that flat. In other words, having had opportunity to commit this crime, and yet you still insist you did not? I most certainly do. And all of them say that when, when they returned, you were still absent, and yet... It you... isn't true. It isn't. I think it is, Lady Isham. I think the truth is quite simple. That you led both of these men, Mr. Hammond and Sir Nicholas, to believe that you loved them. That your husband found out and threatened to divorce you. And rather than face that prospect, you went downstairs to your flat at midnight and stabbed your husband in the back. No! No! So, Mr. Standish, you did leave the flat? Yes, my lord. For what purpose? But I, uh... I suspected the presence of an intruder in the grounds, my lord. And was there one? No, my lord, my suspicion was erroneous. Mr. Standish, why have you not come forward before now with this information? It is not for me to obstruct the vengeance of the Lord. It is not my place to do so. It being, after all, a matter of murder. Well, you, you mean this case? Oh, no, my Lord, no. I was referring to the murder of my late master by Sir Stanley. What? One cannot avoid a modicum of suspicion, my Lord, when the level of weed killer in the potting shed drops by some five inches over a period of two days, immediately prior to my beloved master expiring in frightful agony, having partaken of an unidentifiable curry dish prepared by Sir Stanley. One cannot avoid further suspicion when the local doctor, having expressed surprise at the violence of the master's so-called terminal gastritis, is run over in broad daylight by Sir Stanley's car, and one is inevitably led to the conclusion that the verdict of driving without due care and attention and the endorsement of Sir Stanley's license is hardly sufficient retribution for such a sequence of events, my lord. Well, I mean, did, did you report these suspicions to the relevant authorities? Oh, yes, indeed I did, my lord, to the police at Little Retching, to the then Constable Sampson. You mean the, the officer who investigated this case? Yes, my lord. And what action was taken? Absolutely nothing, my lord. Nothing at all. It has been my belief for some time that uh, Sir Stanley maintained some, some power over the constable, possibly in connection with the matter of Mr. Martin. Yes, that, that will do, uh, Mr. Stanley. That will all. Just stick to the facts, if you please. Understood. Now, did you yourself take any further action in this matter? No, my lord. I was content to wait upon the mills of God. The mills of God, my lord, they... The mills of God grind slowly. 
But they grind exceeding small. Will that be all, my lord? Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Standish. That will be all. My lord, that is my case. You are Arthur Prendergast, senior partner in the firm of Prendergast, Prendergast, Smithers and Prendergast, solicitors of High Street Little Retching. I am. Now, did you visit Retching Hall towards the end of last year, Mr. Prendergast? I did. On the 23rd of December, to be precise, as a result of a somewhat urgent request from Sir Sandy. I, as a result of certain researches into the firm's archives, was able to clarify his mind on certain matters. As a result, he summoned the inhabitants of the house into the hall and made a certain announcement to them. They were not aware of my presence. And do you still have the note that you made on that occasion? I do. My lord, may the witness... Oh, uh, by all means, uh, read your note. You're all here, good, because I've got a bit of Christmas cheer for you all. You thought this house was entailed, didn't you? Well, you're wrong. Somebody forgot to sign something way back in 1800 and something, and it took me to find it out. This house belongs to me, Stan Esham, and nobody else. And I'm going to flog it to the highest bidder just as soon as Christmas is over. And then you'll all be out on your little pink ears, whatever my sainted father might have said, because there won't be Eshams at Retching Hall much longer. So that's it. Like it or lump it. And a Merry Christmas to you all. And then? Then the uh, company dispersed, my lord. Mr. Prendergast, <clears throat> what were the terms of Sir Stanley's will as far as this house is concerned? <laughs> the relevant clause raises the most interesting legal point, my lord. Really? <laughs> Sir Stanley left his personal fortune to his widow but added thereafter a certain phrase. Uh, much, I may say, against my earnest professional advice. What was that phrase? Yes. <clears throat> I quote, Seeing as how she can't have the house, unquote, my lord. He did not at the time of making this will, of course, know that the property was not, after all, entailed. No, and he had no time to make a new will before his demise. And since his demise, has any legal action been instituted to your knowledge uh, concerning this phrase in Sir Stanley's will? It is my understanding that, that the widow, uh, Lady Isham, has instructed her solicitors to contest this phrase, my lord. And in plain layman's terms, Mr. Prendergast, <clears throat> if she succeeds. Then the house reverts to Lady Isham instead of to the present incumbent, Sir Nicholas. It is, I understand, her intention to sell the property.